That's a little flap that they... You can always try and start off on the surface just in case there's something willing to hit a popper. I'd rather catch him on a popper than... Oh, like that. I'd rather catch him on a popper than down deep. This is an 80 mil, 80 mil rooster popper, this one. Pretty, uh, pretty well renowned lure, to be honest, for the barra. They come with good hooks on them and everything, but it's just the noise they make at a really slow action, you know. He's not a bad fish, this one. This little rod, too. We get asked a little about this rod, too. It's uh, called an estuary. It's one of the atomic arrows in the 6 to 14 pound. It's got heaps of guts. Look, I use this for trout. Soft plastic and coral trout and everything, you know. He's a nice fish. Probably up around that 70, 70 centimetre mark. He's a cracker. Get this out of him. And be so careful. If you, if you push up on their bottom jaw, like that, it takes the it takes the kick out of them. They don't kick as much. You might have to get the pliers though. I'm not going to risk it. Oh, no. There you go. Oh, you're going to make me walk in there. Yo, that's it. He's away. See if there's a bigger one there. Look at that. How cool does that look? I know when it's all happening, it's pretty hard sometimes to to make it a a nice slow methodical blooping noise. You tend to adrenaline gets hold of you sometimes, and you tend to work it too fast. But little pops like that. That's all you need. So sketchy. What I'm doing here I normally wouldn't do. <coughs> here now. Might as well give it a gas. This year is going to be ordinary. Baby rat. Oh. <laughs> Not the size of what I thought would come out of there. These big swim bait rods, <coughs> they can be a little bit cumbersome in uh, tight cover sometimes, but there's a cast that comes in handy. If you can't do a cast like this, inside on there like that, I'll show you a cast in a second that will help you. For short range casts, it's only short range stuff. Really that's all we want in this sort of thing anyway. There's a cast called a pitch cast, <coughs> which is to hold your lure away from the hook, obviously, and then just swing it out like that. To rig up these seven inch paddle prawns is just to put the hook through there, and I bring it down further than I normally would to around about there, and pull it out in the chin, and put your fingers behind it and bunch it up so it slides up over the top of that lead weight. You've got to put a bit of saliva on it first. Slide him right up over that R bend so that it covers the eye. All right. Measure where your hook comes to. Bring the hook out there. 
like that, so it all sits nice and flat, like that. Then with your leader, just do an overhand knot and you cut a point onto your leader. And where you think the eye of the hook is, poke it through there, through the eye, out the other side. Just make sure that it's pinched, that it's actually gone through the eye of the hook. Go back through your loop. Pinch him about there and do one, two, three loops. Back through there. Oh, get in there. Back through there like that. And snig him down. So everything's pinned together now in a nice little concealed sort of a presentation. And that's the advantage of these big rods. <coughs> this is a, I well, know, not a big fish, but probably 57, 58 centimetres in this tight, thick country. They're, uh, they, you've got to stop them, you can't give them an inch of line. We've got to try not to anyway. So that one just came off that snag there as I come up over the top of it. I watched him fly up and eat it. So it's pretty spectacular when you can when you can actually watch it happen. So again, cast up current, let it swing down towards it, hop it up, slow retrieve, slow straight retrieve. Same as that over there. So all your structure, basically any form of structure, has the potential to hold fish, but you've got to cast every single one of them to find out which one actually does. because. For some reason, you know, like that one snag seems better than another for some reason. And sometimes you can't pick why, but this is the sort of fish that we're after. <clears throat> this is a meter fish. And again, giving him hardly any line. I've got, uh, I've got 80 pound leader on this one. Oh. He's a bit green. <laughs> oh, fat. My God, they're fat. Yeah, this is really crocky here, so. I've got to try and stay back from the water while I slide this big bugger up. There we go. Oh, how's that for a fat fish? My God. Happy snaps with the phone. The battery's going flat. <laughs> you know, I landed all around that. It wasn't until it landed exactly on the money that he even looked like grabbing that. And it just goes to show, you know, like, <clears throat> that's, that's where he was up in there. But yeah, it might seem like a hard cast to get to and all the rest of it, but sometimes the rewards are <clears throat> very much worth it. You know, you get a fish like that, that's... Hey, David, falling out the bum. Don't be calling out for months. Stop it. Stop it. Wait, wait, wait. Don't do that. Be nice. Don't be doing that. Here, look, look. Bite that. Here we go. Bite that. Ooh, you got him? Here we go. There it is. 
Let me know. You get yourself all tangled up. Come on. Wait. Settle down. Oh, come on. I've got to get this off here. There we go. Say hello. Such a soft animal under the belly. Pretty little thing, eh? They're just the cutest, cutest little animal, these freshies. There we go. He's, a, he's away. Holy dooly. That was a little bit unexpected. Let's twitch to see if he does it again. He's had one about 80. Just come out from under that twig there. He sat there and shook his head and the bloody hook fell straight out. A bloody big fish was sitting there, that's for sure. Oh, oh, big bear. Oh, yes, got him. That's a nice fish and he's running straight at me. Oh, now he's running another way. Oh, dropped him. What the hell? Ah. That was a proper big fish, that one. Oh, yep. Then I have... Oh, oh. What the hell? That was another big bow wave. Now that's a 6 oh and I cannot, you can't find a sharper hook. That's the shot, that's where they've been sitting. Oh, yep. He's not a bad one either. Is he? He's not a big one, but he's not a bad one, I think. Mean. Geez, they're running straight at me when I hit them. Oh. Come on. Oi. Come on. I'm about 60 or something like that. Hey, come on. Uh, maybe not even 60. No, it wouldn't be 60. It'd be just legal, I reckon. There you go. I want one of them other big buggers. Oh, geez, I don't know. Maybe close enough. Oh, oh. oh. So what's happened is we've, we've got the bite happening now. So that took like a lot of cast. But what ha what's happened is all the barra in this area. This is a nice fish, this one. Running straight at me again. Again, not a not a big one, but a good fun size fish. This one to be about that 60. Little bit. This is wild, so I'll show you. I can land it far enough up in that little drain. Yep, right up in there. That's where they're sitting. Oh, oh. Not out the front anymore. They've actually gone right up in that little drain.
they're sitting like right in the grass. So whatever they're eating, there's a bit of grass. And as you can tell, she's done a little one. About the same sort of size, oh no, even smaller. Now this one's be lucky to be 40. Mm. Show them something a bit different. Helco Hammer 105. The battery's going flat, so sorry I'm going to miss a heap of this footage, but that's my last battery. Look at that colour. <laughs> Have a listen to this bloody wind howling now. This is about to get a big storm, so might have time for another quick couple of fish. And then bail. The track out of here gets pretty ordinary when it's wet. Bloody hell. Getting pretty nasty now. Oh. 